What is going on guys? We are back playing some more surviving with thermal expansion. Now you know it's been quite some time since the last video. I apologize for that. A lot of you guys have been asking where I've been, so I'll kind of do a short overview of what I've been doing. Um, pretty much the short story is just I was taking a break. Uh, the end of the semester got pretty crazy for me with finals and homework and projects and all that. And then I got home for the holidays, spent that with family, and pretty much just used it as a much needed break from Minecraft. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys have experienced burnout with Minecraft. It's been a game that most of us have probably played for quite some time now. So I took a couple weeks off, and now I am ready to jump back into it, and pretty much more excited than ever. I'm really looking forward to finishing up with this mod, or I guess I should stay starting since we've only had one episode so far. Um, but that's enough rambling about that. We're going to get into what we're doing today, which is getting infinite power. Now, I know it seems really early on. It's only episode two, and we're going to be getting infinite power. Well, luckily for us, this mod comes fully equipped with ways to get infinite power both early game and then later in the game. So the setup we're going to make today will have a lot of upgrades that can be put onto it to make it more efficient. And those will require kind of a later game setup. But what we'll do today is still going to be infinite power and still very easy and cheap to set up. So this is all going to center around the Arboreal Extractor, which we are going to use to pull resin from a spruce tree. And that is why you see two spruce trees that have been cut down. I actually did not have any spruce saplings. I guess I threw them somewhere. I didn't pick them up. So needed to get a couple of those. And unfortunately, I do not have bone meal. So the beginning of this episode is not actually going to be doing the crafting right away. We're going to get one of these growing uh, right where we need it. And then we can do the crafting. And hopefully, it'll have grown. If not, I will just go off camera. And, you know, that'll be it. And we'll just come back when it's done. So... Since this setup is up here, and I want to keep it relatively close, I believe we are going to put the sapling, let's just do it right here. Let's grow the sapling right here. Now the reason I do not want to put it right on the ground is we are going to have stuff under it. So I'm actually going to move it up. I guess putting it up one right there will be fine. So the tree is going to grow right here. It does need to be on dirt so you can grow the tree, but do not, once the tree is grown, get rid of the dirt under it. You need to keep it on the dirt. So we're going to get rid of this block then, and you'll see what I'm doing right now, how it'll be useful later. Just trust me, make it so you've got some room to work with under it. So now we can get into the actual crafting, and we'll just hope that that thing actually grows in the time that it takes us to do this. So today, this is all the resources you're going to need. Uh, I didn't actually do any pre-crafting for any of the small components, so this is just the straight raw stuff that you're going to need. And uh, it's actually a decent amount. Luckily for me, I still have a fair bit left in here. I did a pretty extensive mining trip, um, and that's why you should get this whole setup going first so that you can get the most out of your ores. But start pulling this stuff out, and we can start crafting with it. So the first thing that we're going to need to make is going to be the Arboreal Extractor, and that's what this whole thing is centered around. So what this does is it extracts fluids from a tree. Now, different trees give different things. I know oak trees give sap. We're going for the spruce tree that gives resin. Uh, so to make this, we're going to need some iron gears, copper ingots, buckets, a device frame, and a redstone servo. And we're going to make four of these. So we're going to pull out enough stuff for four of them. So we'll get four of those. Device frame. This gets a little bit annoying just because there's so many little parts that we have to craft for this. I actually was not looking forward to doing this. You can do it with just one for the setup, but you can use up to four if you're using a regular size tree. If you do the two by two tree, you can do even more. You can do eight, but uh, yeah, for today, we're just going to do four of them. So if you don't have enough to do all four of these, I know it might be a little expensive if you're trying to follow along, then you can only do one, two, three. It really doesn't matter. So what are we missing out on here? The iron gears. Yeah, these are what made it pretty expensive. So we have eight of those making sure I don't overcraft things so there we go we got four arboreal extractors and the next thing we're going to need to make is going to be uh, a dynamo it should be the compression dynamo yep so the compression dynamo so this is just going to use oh my gosh this new recipe unlock thing there's got to be some way to get rid of that I'm sure you guys know hit me up with that in the comments please because that is actually a little bit annoying new recipe unlocked like like I, I, whatever whatever we're not going to get into that it's a little bit annoying um but the next thing we're going to need and the kind of the last machine that we're going to need is going to be the i believe it's the fractionating still so this is going to use some nickel i think this was the only one that actually required a complex uh oh no this wasn't okay something we're making today requires electrum so 
I was going to say, that's the only thing that needs, like, a complex ingot. I don't know what else you would call it. It's a blend, I know. Uh, but it's, it's complex because you actually need to, to make a blend for it. And then we need two of these. And what are we missing? Oh, I didn't actually make this? What? Okay. So there we go. More pop-ups, of course. And then we are going to be making couple different we're going to be making uh some leadstone flux ducts i think we only need six of those i think i only planned on making six of those then we're going to make a fluid duct right there we're going to actually make two of those i believe hopefully i didn't just waste stuff that we needed and then we are also going to make uh the energy cell because we're going to be getting way more power than we need to use so we're going to be making the basic one this holds two million rf which is plenty right now so this is what uses the Electrum, the blend that you will have to make. It's just silver and gold, and you can put that into the pulverizer and then just pull it out before it actually gets cooked down. Get a block of redstone going there, and then the energy cell just needs this lead gear. And, whoops, finish that off, and there we go. So we've effectively used everything. That means I was perfect with my memory. Uh, thankfully, you know, I'm only 20 years old, about to turn 21, and my memory is still sharp so that's one thing to be thankful for so there is one other thing that we need to talk about which is going to be the repurposing of what we're using right now so we've got a steam dynamo and then we've also got an aqueous accumulator we are going to need both of these for this setup so if you don't have this going already you are going to need to make these the steam dynamo is going to be used with whatever item we make is going to get put in there and then the power will get looped back through and then the excess will get pulled out and the aqueous accumulator is going to be needed for both the steam dynamo and the compression dynamo so that is why we are going to be using the fluid ducts so uh i probably had a wrench before um i guess i can talk about this now while we wait for this tree to grow if it ever will grow uh but as you can see there's a death waypoint there this happened maybe 30 minutes ago i was afk i had signed on and then i went to go do something and i thought i had you know pressed escape and everything was paused but I came back and was dead, unfortunately, and it had been so long, everything had despawned. So, I guess, now that I've told you guys about that, I can get rid of it. I'm not, you know, I'm not ashamed of it. Perfectly fine, you know, I just lost experience and items and valuable stuff, but whatever. So, uh, is this one the Crescent Hammer? Or, yeah, it is. Okay, I know sometimes it's a wrench, sometimes it's a Crescent Hammer, so that's iron and tin. And we can just make one of those. You probably already have one. I should already have one, but I suck at this game, unfortunately. So, there we go, Crescent Hammer. And I believe that should allow us to just pop these off. And we don't really need to worry about these actually functioning right now. Uh, I also should get two buckets. Oh, that's another thing that I lost. I was wondering why I had no buckets when I went to go do the crafting. Uh, and I guess those probably despawned. That's great. Okay. This is a little, that's a little bit more annoying than I thought it was. Uh, but we will grab both buckets of that. And then we can just fill that in for now. And I'm not going to worry about kind of connecting this stuff just yet. But, so the tree is not grown. That is unfortunate. Um, and I don't have any bone meal, which is also unfortunate. So what I might do is hop off camera, allow the tree to grow. Just because if we start setting this stuff up around it, um, it's going to make it even harder for it to grow. So I'll go off camera, let this thing grow, and then we can come back and start actually constructing stuff. Okay, guys, so the tree has finally grown. No, it did not grow on its own. Unfortunately, I had to use a very strategic method to actually get it to grow, which was let it become nighttime, let enough guys spawn, sleep, and then run around trying to find bones that drop from skeletons that died. I got lucky and I found one. Surprisingly, I managed to see it in the snow. Uh, and then pulverize that, and on the first bone meal, it grew. So, this should be good. Obviously, we're going with just the single tree and not the 2x2. Two two. Uh, like I said, you can go with that if you want, but I think it's best to just start off with the single one since it's a little bit cheaper to do and easier to set up. So, first things first, we need to get out our arboreal extractors and put those on each side. Now, you want to put it on the lowest level, so the leaves don't really matter. Uh, you can get rid of some of the leaves if you want. You don't want to get rid of all of them, but I would just say leave them. Leave the leaves. God, it was awful. Um, but yeah, just leave them there unless it's really supposed to be compact and you need to fit it in some like corner somewhere in your base. Uh, but... We'll put them down. Now, if you put it right here, you will see that it lights up. But if you were to put it in a spot that it can extract, nothing is going to happen to the texture on the front. So let me just get out my hammer to get that back. That's why you need to put it on the first level. 
so there, there, and there. And that's going to get a little annoying. I don't want to get rid of my infinity pool there, so we're just going to do that for the time being. Now, we do need to leave the dirt, and what we're going to do is go get our fluiducts because these are going to output, and they're already going to start gathering it. Uh, we might see some resin get collected in here. They should get 1,000 or 100 every time it actually collects some, so they should go up in increments of 100. Uh, you can see, obviously, it's random. This one's at 200. This one is at 100 now. This one's at 100, and this one might be at 200, I think. Yeah, this one's at 100. So what we need to do is now extract this out the bottom because the first step is to pull the resin that we are getting from this and put it into the fractionating still. So we're going to, we're definitely not going to break that because we need to keep that there, but we're going to put the fractionating still down there and then we are going to plug all of these into that. I'm trying to think of the best way to do that um, since I really only want to input it on one side. So I think what we do is instead of pulling all of these down, we can just hook them up together and put it down. Um, which side? I want to put it, I want it facing this side. There we go. So we're gonna have it facing that side just so I can get that nice, nice photo when I have to put it on the thumbnail. And then we can have these going down this side here. So we'll connect here, here, and this only needs to get connected at one point. We'll just connect it in the front and there. So all it's doing is pushing it down into one side. You can connect it however you like. Uh, you can pull all of these down and push it in on each side. It doesn't really matter. I just like to keep as many sides open as I can because we are going to be getting an item from this, um, which is going to be rosin from the resin. So if we look that up, you can see it looks like an orange slime ball and that is made by taking 100 millibuckets of resin and then making it into rosin, you have a 75% chance, and then you get 50 millibuckets of tree oil. Now we're gonna be putting both of these to good use, and one thing you might notice is that over here, the energy levels go down. So obviously we're not generating power with this step in the process, we're actually using it. Now luckily for us, this takes way less energy than the rosin and tree oil will generate, so we can just make an infinite loop and pull out whatever extra power we get, which will be a significant amount, and end up using that for our actual uh, machines. So now that I think about it, we actually probably want to move this to the other side over here. And the only reason I say that is because if we want the power close to these machines, we probably want to pull stuff out that side. So now we need to change the configuration. Um, this side needs to go to blue. And someone told me the key binds to like click through stuff fast. It's like shift, shift right click clears the side. Yes, it does. Got it. I still remembered it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. So this side is where we are going to be outputting the uh, rosin. And that is going to be going into our steam dynamo. So try to think of how we want to do this. I might actually make some item ducts so that we can move stuff a little bit away from this. If we wanted it to be really compact, we could put it directly up against this, but we're going to be pumping a lot of things around this. And if we're going to pull out from the top of the steam dynamo, uh, the power, then we're going to want it to have at least the ability to get pulled out from the top of it. So what we can do is let's check out item ducts. I don't actually know the recipe for these. It's tin. And, oh, it is hardened glass. Okay, well, we're not going to do that today. So, is there any cheaper one? Oh, that's an opaque. So, that was the for the non-opaque. So, for this one, it's just tin and lead. Okay, that would have been really embarrassing. That would have been one where I get flamed in the comments. If I had just not made one today and changed the setup because of it, I would have gotten flamed in the comments for that, for sure. Okay, so we're going to be pulling it out from there, and then we are going to have the steam dynamo... Let's do it right here. So let's rotate this and get the power out the top of it. And then we're going to put the compression dynamo pretty much directly next to it. Now, I guess these could actually, you know what? We're going to move them back one. I thought we'd put them out one, but we'll actually put them right here and right here. And of course, the power is going to come out the top. So we can put the leadstone right on top of these right now. And the first thing we need to do is worry about getting the power from these back to this machine. So I'm trying to think what the best way would be to do that in terms of wiring. If we want to make it super compact, we actually might want to put this under it. 
but I don't think we really need to worry about that. From the back of this, we're actually going to be pulling out, um, this one should be the back, we're going to be pulling out the orange, the red. So that's where our fluid duct is going to go for this one. And how do we not make these connect? Do we just, there we go, and there we go. So just got to make sure these don't connect because one of them is going to be pulling out the, uh, the tree oil from here and putting it into the compression dynamo. And then this one is going to be getting the items to the steam dynamo. And now we got to get the power. So this is the one conflicting thing for me. I think what we're going to do is probably flip them upside down. That's probably the best way to do it. So it's going to be a little bit weird. I thought we wanted them this way, but we're going to flip them upside down like that since we can only put the power out that side that they're going to end up kind of pushing to is the way it looks. So we'll get down here and we'll just line it like this. And then we can easily run the power if we go like this over here, go under it and there. And then this should automatically get power because there is some power left in the steam dynamo. Is this, is there a reason that this is not working? Hmm. Okay, guys. So I think I figured out what the issue is. I had to go into a creative world to try and figure it out because I was actually stumped. I picked this thing up. I tried it on everything and it just would not power stuff. And I believe the issue is because this RF that's stored in here has it at max capacity. So we can put coal in and we can put water in and it's not going to move this. And if I was to hook this up when it had half power to something, it would still have the same issue. But if I were to put fuel in it, then it would actually be able to start the power moving again and almost like get it to internally realize that it's gaining power and then it could use up all the power it has in it. So this setup would work right now if I were hooking up a completely fresh dynamo or one that does not have full power. So I think the only way around this is to actually go and uh, make another dynamo. I don't actually think there's any other way around it right now. Um, and luckily for me, it's not really that expensive. So we are just going to need the three iron, the uh, one piece of redstone. What else was it? Two pieces of redstone for that and some silver. Where's my silver? There we go. And then copper gear, which is eight copper. This is a little bit disappointing just because I thought we were going to be able to pretty much reuse everything we had, but at least I figured out what the issue is. So we can make this, make both of those, and there we go. So when we hook this up, uh, if we, I'm curious what happens if we, if we pickaxe this. Does it maintain its power level still? It still does. Okay, well, if we place this down on there and then flip it over, what we're going to have to do is jumpstart it a little bit. So we'll always have to have the aqueous accumulator hooked up to this anyway, so we can figure out where that's going to go. Uh, obviously, at least one of these is going to have to have a fluid duct to it. So I think the best bet is to do fluid duct here, fluid duct here, and then we could do like an aqueous accumulator right here. I don't want to put it completely underground in case we ever have to get to this. Uh, but we can put that there and fill up these two sides at least. So get these buckets out. There, there. Now it should be going and should be able to input into these if we go here gotta make sure it's outputting oh you know what we got to turn the face of it because we can't output the front face that's unfortunate too we'll just we'll put it here so we can look at the lovely face of the machine how do you how do you flip the face of the machine i thought i did that earlier with right clicking okay well regardless it's working now hopefully we didn't break any torches okay so now these are filled up and if we were to put one piece of coal in here it should start going. It'll start powering this. As you can see, it's getting power in it, and then it'll start functioning. Again, there's only a 75% chance that we actually get out what we need. And as you can see, it takes quite some time, but we will also get out the tree oil, which will then come over here and put out even more power. So now all we have to do is hook up the energy cell, and that can pretty much go anywhere. Uh, I think that probably the best spot to put it right now would be like right here under almost underground ish uh which is slightly odd i would put the fluid ducts on the top of this but that would require me to make more you know maybe that would be the best bet to put them on top of this and then i could put this pretty much right behind it um it's getting a little bit busy over here but i think actually yeah the probably the best bet would be to put it like right here 
underground. So we'll do this and just run the power over here. And then this will be outputting. Uh, the input should be on every side. Or the input should be on only one side, and that should be this side, which would be there. Yep. So there we go. Get all these to output. And so now these should be getting power from this. And eventually this should start getting power. So you can see right here, it is getting power because this finished. And uh, regardless of whether or not this is running, at least this should be running right here. You can see we've got tree oil in there and it is in fact running. So I don't know the exact power that we get from all of this, um, but as you can see up here, these have all drained. I don't know if all of them are fully drained. Yeah, they are. So in here, there's not a huge internal buffer, uh, but it uses enough per item being made that it should be able to suck out most of what's in here. So you should only need one of these per tree. But luckily for us, uh, you can set up a lot of these and they really don't take up that much space. And eventually you won't need, uh, you know, multiple steam dynamos. You won't need one per. You might be able to hook up two or three per because as you can see, the process takes a fair bit of time. So let's see if we got one right there. Yeah, so we didn't even get one right there. Luckily for us though, even if we don't get one, the compression dynamo ends up filling up with tree oil and that will keep giving us power. So slowly but surely we will be charging this up and obviously it's not the best power in the world, but on top of that, we can put a lot of upgrades. Eventually we can put augments in this when we do make upgrades to it. Um, and along with that, we can, we can pretty much upgrade everything in here, I believe. We can't upgrade these, but what we can do for these is add fertilizer. I don't, it's not actually called fertilizer. It starts with a P. Let me see if I can find this in here. Can't remember the exact name. It's right here. So it's Phytogrow, uh, Rich Phytogrow, and Fluxed Phytogrow. And this is what I was saying with this being able to be upgraded, I believe. It goes uh, up to 16 times an increased rate when you're using Fluxed Phytogrow. Um, and if you look at this, all it has to do is take the rich one and you put energy into it. And then on top of this, uh, the rich one to make it, it's actually not that much different than the, uh, the regular, but instead of regular slag, you use rich slag. So I'm pretty sure we can at least automate this first one with sawdust, niter, and slag. The niter should be very easy. Uh, the slag might be a little bit different and the sawdust should be really, really simple. So all in all, I do not think it's going to be that hard to fully upgrade this, but for today, this should be a good enough setup. If we look down here, you can see still getting a fair bit of power. I don't actually know if we've gotten any into the steam dynamo just yet, but we should be getting them pretty frequently. Let's, let's watch and see when this one finishes, if it pumps anything into the steam dynamo. Huh? The recipe should be a 75% chance to get that. Are we just getting really unlucky with this? Huh. Whoops. Interesting. It should be getting output. Am I just like not seeing this thing running? Yeah, I think, okay, I think the item is going in here and I'm actually just not seeing this thing run. Because you can see the sides turn white and I, we're not seeing any energy in here, but I assume once this gets full, we'll actually be able to see it start stockpiling in here. But yeah, when it's running, these side parts of it should be lighting up. And yeah, so yeah, there it should be running. There, we can actually see it this time. We can see that it is burning something and this should be going up much faster now. So you will have increments where you're getting more power and less power really depending on it. But for the most part, this should be the completed setup for the time being. Very, very simple to do. It does require that you go on kind of like one or two extensive mining trips. But I think that's going to be it for today, guys. A couple just kind of housekeeping things at the end of the video. I am going to try and do at least a video every other day. Um, and I'll probably use my time over break to stockpile videos, recording one or two every day and still releasing them at that schedule. Just so if there are any kind of blips in my ability to record, there won't be a big downtime anymore. Uh, along with that, if you guys want to see anything specific, feel free to post it in the comments. Obviously, I don't know a ton about this mod. So outside of me working around in the game and realizing there's something that I need, uh, it's a little bit more annoying for me to come up with stuff to do just because I, on the top of my head, don't know all the things you can do with this mod. Um, but other than that, there is going to be a new outro thing that I'm going to be doing 
where it's just like the kind of end of the video clips with like recommended videos and the subscribe button and stuff. I'm trying to be a little bit more professional on the videos now. So let me know what you guys think about that. If you like it, if you don't, all that good stuff. Let me know how your New Year's went. And uh, I guess that's going to be it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and I will talk to you later. Rolling past me, all my memories rolling past me.